On BBC Two in just a few moments, Keith Floyd. Brand new comedy series with an hour-long episode to introduce Michael Williams as N.V. Standish. Double first. Can I get in there? Sorry, it's reserved. Who for? Me. Where's your car? It's coming, it's coming. Well, come on. What do you mean, come on? I found a space. What about this space? We don't need it now. We don't need it now. I think 12 years of coming to the same place is quite enough, don't you? Quite enough. But they know us in there. Of course they bloody know us. Well, now, where then? I don't know. Well, go on then. Eat it. I'm going to. Go on then. Is that nice? It's very good. Just need to spot a mustard. The mustard doesn't make farting noises at the spinning wheel. It comes in nice little glass cruets with nice little spoons. For nice little old ladies in Lyle stockings, which is what I'm trying to avoid us becoming. That's years ahead. Oh, so you admit that's how we'll end up then. No. Excuse me, I'm going to the loo. Do you want a free lollipop or a funny hat when you're finished? What's the matter? I've just seen N.V. Standish. N.V. Standish? Where? Cooking the hamburgers. Oh, don't be silly, Mary. It is. working in a place like that. It didn't look well. I think I'll mow the lawn. Do you have to? I want to do some work. It's not that noisy. I'm sure you suit that engine up. Look, when the Sunday supplements want a photograph of a famous English novelist reclining on her lawn, you don't want to look like Mowgli trying to find his way out of the jungle, do you? If I were a halfway famous English novelist, I'd be living in Los Angeles and I'd have astroturf. All right, I'll just clip the edges. Thank you. I'll throw up boils. Adolescent. How old is he? Sixteen. <laughs> well, the bus driver said I could be taken for twenty-one. Oh, did he? Fancy this envy, Standish? Yes, I suppose she did. I thought so. She told me you looked as though you were going to faint. Well, when you haven't seen somebody for a long time, it's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? Yes. 
Funny that, both of you fancying him. He was like an eagle. He soared above everybody else at Oxford. Academically brilliant. Intellect far beyond his years. A great athlete to all the strength and grace of a panther. So which was he, an eagle or a panther? Both. What was Dad then? Well, a fine good man. But not an eagle or a panther. Ellen, all this was 25 years ago. We were just girls when we knew N.B. Standish. I say knew. Well, we just hero-worshipped him from afar. Everybody did, men and women. There was a greatness about him. I don't use the expression lightly. So, why is he grilling hamburgers for a living? We don't know. Well, why didn't you ask him? Things are not as easy as that. Yes, they are. Simply go up to him and ask him. Ellen, don't you think for a man like N.V. Standish to be doing a job like that, it's obvious something's gone terribly wrong with his life. It precludes a normal conversation you might have with somebody you haven't seen for a long time. You can hardly go up to him and say, how are you, what are you doing these days, when he's standing behind a griddle with a silly hat on his head. Well, what did he do when he left university? And the diplomatic service. Even then, everybody said he would end up as the British ambassador in Washington. Oh, but he found time to write a novel. A major novel. You should read that, incidentally. And then after five years or so, it was as though he had vanished from the face of the earth. So that's your answer, then? He was being trained on another planet to be a hamburger chef. Well, you'll never know if you don't ask him, will you? There's one of my tables that's last. The incidence of coincidence. Can you have that? Yes, hell you can. A lot of work being done on it, French chap. Forgot his name. It won't wait, family. It doesn't, it just goes. So you said you were engaged? We are. Oh, well, far be it for me to stand in the way of true love. <laughs> Aren't you pop off, Sylvia? I'll take the money. Oh, thanks. Red could take some lessons from you in behaviour. Good night, Norman. Good night, Sylvia. Envy Standish, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. We were all at Oxford together. Not together. No, at the same time. Oh, Louise and Mary Webster. You probably don't remember us. Uh, Louise and Mary Webster? Yes, of course. <sighs> so, how are you then? Oh, oh. older and wiser. Oh. How are you? Oh, very well. Good. Well, it's nice to see you again. You were in the diplomatic service, weren't you? Yes. But you're not now. Hardly. I resigned in 1966. Oh. Everyone thought... I, I'd really sooner not talk about it. Of course, of course, no. Yes. Look after yourself. Yes. 
And you look after yourself. Goodbye. Goodbye. And um, we hope that everything... Goodbye. Faintest idea. Fancy envy remembrings. He would. I almost wish we'd never seen him. Yes. Well, he resigned from the diplomatic service in 1966. Did he? Why? He didn't want to talk about it. Do you think he'll come? He said he would. Why shouldn't he? Pride. Oh, I feel as though we've found him out. Didn't find out anything. No, no, embarrassed him. However badly life has treated him, a man like N.V. Standish would never lose his sensitivity. Well, at least I'll get a free lunch out of it. Yeah, that's all very fine. What about these here things I want to discuss with you? I don't know. I must admit to hoping that they're blue with a picture of the Duke of Wellington on the back. I say, trouble is, a man of your breed would be too proud to take it. <laughs> Not anymore. The second consideration is, what would they want in return? What ever happened to your faith in human nature? Never had none. Oh, why are you so cheerful? I drink a lot. Mm -hmm. Huh? How do I look? Mm -hmm. Like mutton dressed up as mutton? You know, it's been a salutary experience knowing you, William. Were you the little boy who realised that the Emperor was naked? What Emperor? <laughs> Delicious. Look, oh, another brandy. No, no, you're spoiling me. We want to. Uh, could we? In that case. Well, now, from what I can remember of the former business lunches correctly, it's at this point that the item for discussion is introduced into the conversation. Thank you. It's not business. Oh, not business. Look, Envy. Please don't be offended. This is something that goes in one direction only, from us to you. Oh. Believe me, Louise and I have discussed it very thoroughly, and we're quite certain, although it is within an area of possible embarrassment. Oh. It has to be said that we find you in... Um, Reduced circumstances. Yes, reduced circumstances. I cannot deny it. But there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. There must be. But until then, Envy, please accept the offer we want to make. We want you to come and live with us. See what you're going to make your mind up about. Go and live with them. They'd be house rules. <laughs> Ain't bad looking women. I don't think that's the kind of relationship they have in mind. You could always turn it into one. Oh, don't put on that pained expression. It don't always fall in your lap these days, do it? Ah, oysters and champagne at the club. What did you do to them two up at Oxford all them years ago to make them still hold you in such high regard? That's what I want to know. 
I was in V. Standish. Race three is on first, trap one, hiker last. Second, trap five, Molly friend Bonds. Then there's the child. What child? Louise's daughter. Oh, or is it Mary's? Anyway, one of them's got a daughter. Oh, what about the husband? Ah, oh, she's a widow. Oh. Ooh. I mean, at this stage in my life, do I really want to be exposed to the intellectual vacuum of a 16-year-old girl? I think I can safely look forward to a creaking neck tomorrow. Bloody rain. Mind you, I seem to wake up every morning these days with atrophy of this, that or the other. I'm getting too old to be a bum, will you? Well, you went like me. You don't have to be. That's what I used to think. Any time I fancied it, start a new career. That's what I used to think. Not on. Oh, what experience have you had in the business world over the last 20 years, Mr. Standish? Oh, extensive. I was a barman in Valparaiso. I slaughtered beef in Chicago. I stoked boilers on a Liberian freighter. And a forecourt attendant at Gravesend, to list but a few. Uh, and, of course, currently, I'm in hamburgers. Close the door on your way out, will you, Mr. Standish? You know what you've just done, don't you? I piss myself off. You just made out a very good case for moving in with your fan club. Next, please. Oh, uh, rocket chips toys, please. Best one yet, Mary. Best one yet. Finished it already? I couldn't put it down. Oh, I did cry at the end. <laughs> you always do. Well, that's the art of it. Art? It's pap. Did Damien have to lose his arm, though? Oh, the way I came to feel about Damien, he was lucky to only lose his arm. Mm. I'll go. Envy! Mary? Louise. Oh, Louise, yes, of course. You did say that if I... Oh, yes, of course. Come in. Mary? It's Envy. Envy's here. What a charming house you have. We didn't know whether you would come, but you have. Oh, Envy. Mary. We didn't know whether you would come. Why are we all standing? Mm. Sit down. Thank you. Sit down. Does this mean... Well, you were kind enough to ask me if I wanted to come along and look, look, look around. Yes, of course. Tea. We'll have tea first. I'll make some tea. <laughs> Ellen? Ellen, Envy Standish has arrived. Has he? He's going to look at the house. Well, that's big of him. Now, don't start. I'm not starting. I just don't see why I should have an orgasm because you spring a lodger on me. Look, we don't even know whether he's going to stay with us yet. Oh, no, of course. He's going to have to see first whether the house is good enough for him. If he's going to stay here to be, what was your word, mended? I did not say mended. Well, Aunt Mary did then. We're having tea. It's, it's enormous generosity. Enormous. All right, we knew each other at university all those years ago, but for you to offer lodgings... Oh, no, please, th not lodgings. If you were to come and stay with us, we we'd want you to think of this as your home. When did you last have a proper home, Envy? Home? Oh, not for a long time. I suppose the last home of my own would have been, what, uh, 16 years ago? Uh, planting coffee. Then a coup, and of course... Your capital is in the trees. Not that capital was a favourite word of the new government. You lost everything. Yeah, everything. And since then? Since then, well... Ah, oh, Ellen. Ellen, this is Envy Standish. Envy, my daughter Ellen. I'm very pleased to meet you. Hello. What does Envy stand for? Not very. <laughs> If we finish tea, shall we make a tour of inspection? Yes, I'd love to see the rest of the house. Who 
Louise and I were brought up here, and then uh, when mother and father died, we, we stayed on. Why should you want to know about the bus service? Well... N.B. We don't want you anywhere near hamburgers ever again. You need to rest. Rebuild. Mend. Yes, well, I, I can't deny that. But we must be practical. I mean, I, I have no savings. How could I possibly pay the rent? We wouldn't accept a penny. Oh, come. No, no. Mother and father left us quite comfortably off, truly. And, of course, Mary sells. Sells what? Books. This is a study. Oh. So, you're a writer, Mary. A scribbler. No, she isn't. She's jolly good. She's written all these. Have you really? May I? They're not very good, Envy. And all of them put together aren't worth one paragraph of yours. Good God. Would you like to see the garden? Do you have a gardener to help with all this? <laughs> Only me. I'm the brawn and Mary's the brains. So. Oh, you're as slim as you ever was. I'm afraid the tennis court is a disgrace. Do you still play? No. No, not for years. I doubt that I'm in the county standard anymore. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mary. Good afternoon, Louise. Hello, Derek. Hello, Derek. Bums. What? We've invited him for dinner tonight. Oh, yes, so we have. And we, you will stay for dinner, won't you, Mary? I'd love to. <laughs> well, I must say, the house is really delightful. Ah, but we saved the best bit till last. Well, we hope it's the best bit. Let's show you where you'd live. when mother and father were alive and uh, we kept it on. I hope you like it. <clears throat> oh. You'd be quite private. You wouldn't be bothered if you didn't want to be. Of course, we'd love you to take meals with us in the house, but if you didn't want to, you could always have something on a tray up here. Well, Envy. I don't know what to say. I... I haven't been used to kindness for many years now. You don't approve of me, do you? I hardly know you. I'd like us to be friends, Ellen. I really would. Look, you don't have to try and get me on your side. I don't carry any weight around here. Oh. I'll get it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you look very smart. Oh, thank you. You look very grown up. The bus driver said I could pass for 21. Uh, yes, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Derek Envy Standish. Envy Standish, Derek. I'm oh, very pleased to meet you. How'd you do? <laughs> ah, uh, you're the chap I saw in the garden, aren't you? Oh, yes, of course. You must be the chap of the Daxons. Yes. Rascal and Ragamuffin, <coughs> yes. Uh, may I help myself to a sherry, Ellen? 
Our house is your house, Derek. No, 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 no. I'll get it. Derek. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Derek. <laughs> Two more, Sherry. Oh, lovely. Derek. Thank you. Envy is an old friend. We were all at university together. Really? He's going to be staying with us. That's nice. How long for? As long as he likes. Oh. Thank you. Well, cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Would you go through? I think we're about ready. <clears throat> So, um, what line of business are you in exactly? I grill hamburgers. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, no, absolutely true. <laughs> Meet you spend the rest of the time <laughs> quite convinced that Maguire was an agent for the KGB. <laughs> True, you once had tea with Arthur Miller. Yeah. yeah. Well, to be absolutely accurate, he came to tea with my tutor, and my tutor was kind enough to invite me. How wonderful. What was he like? Dazzling. He's a set book now. Do you know, I shall never forget seeing you scoring the winning try against the Harlequins. Good Lord. Were you there? Yes, I was. Yellow tights and a white mini dress. I must have looked like a half peeled banana. <laughs> <laughs> the way you slipped that full back. He'd slowed up because he'd swallowed his upper dentures. <laughs> rascal, uh, ra rascal and ragamuffin. Uh, rascal and ragamuffin did a very funny thing today. Really, Derek? What was that? Well, <laughs> they pin a workman's sandwiches. <laughs> oh. Yes. Uh, I suppose it was funnier to see than to describe. Oh, yes, yes. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that octopus in the dean's bath. <laughs> oh, how do you know about that? <laughs> what I'd like to know is how you ended up grilling hamburgers. Ellen. No, no, no. It's a perfectly reasonable question. Yes, I, I must admit, after hearing of your university exploits, uh, I am uh, rather intrigued by the uh, uh, seesaw effect since then. Hardly seesaw, Derek. When a seesaw comes down, it goes up again. After I had resigned from the diplomatic service, everything suddenly seemed to have a downward spiral motion. I've told you about the coffee business, haven't I? He lost everything. Communists. It was as though my personal apocalypse had somehow been decreed. And for the first time in my life, I felt quite uh, helpless. Ill health, trust betrayed, corruption. And all the time, the standards that I had set myself those years ago were being eroded until, uh, well, well, you know the rest. Oh, I do apologize. Self pity running riot, isn't it? Couldn't you have written another book? I was too busy trying to survive. May I ask you why you finished with the diplomatic service? In the first place. Derek, please. I was press attaché to the British ambassador in Venezuela. There was an it. There was an incident on a on a balcony in Caracas. I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, listen, M.V., I'm sorry I upset you this evening. It was, uh, just a conversation or a question. 
Yes, of course, Derek. Yes. I mean, that incident uh, on the balcony in Caracas. Well, it's, it's, it's obviously an old wound with you. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it was that happened. Quite. I'm an accountant, by the way. Are you? Hmm. I handle all Mary and Louise's affairs. Oh. We've, we've become uh, very close friends uh, down the years. Uh, since my mother died, very, very recently, uh, I suppose we've, we've become even friendlier. I must have assumed some sort of position uh, in their lives. Uh, I don't know what exactly. Suitor? No. Well, I, 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 I try to look after them both. You know, we, uh, we go out. All three of us. We go out a lot. We go to, uh, we go to the theatre, um, you know, local societies, and so on. Yes, but man to man, Derek. Which one of them do you fancy? Fancy. I. Uh... I don't think I've ever quite considered it in that light. Most would. Yes, well, I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, if, well, God forbid, if, if something should happen to one of them, that uh, I, I, I wouldn't marry the other one. Uh, no. If you want a butler, you'll keep me in mind, won't you? You want to get in touch with Woolard? There'll be a vacancy for hamburger chef now. I wouldn't ask Woolard for a rope if I wanted to hang myself. You want to get on with that attitude? Oh, I'll get by. Of course, I can't always rely on two fairy godmothers coming into my life. <laughs> ah, there you are. I still can't believe it. Shangri-La. And they want nothing in return. Yeah, they will. Yeah, you don't do them. They're people. Aren't they? Thank you, Derek. Good night. Good night. They're very nice ladies. Oh, hello, Ellen. Yes, very. Thank you very much. Now, look, I've got to go out, but don't worry. If there's anything you need, the staff is still here. So don't hesitate to ask. Hello, Derek. Anything I can do for you? 
Uh, me? Uh, no, no thank you. No, I've uh, just come to saw some logs. I do that nearly every Saturday. A bit warm for a fire, isn't it? Hmm. <clears throat> oh, yeah. The prudent man plans ahead. Now, I find that if I saw logs for Louise and Mary consistently through the summer, they have a good supply of dry logs for when winter comes. Yes, yes, cool. Mm. Shall I tell them you're here? No, there's no need, no need. They're used to having me hanging around. Yes, I've even got uh, my own key to the house. Yes, I've got one of those. Yes, as I thought, your overblow pipe's blocked. Let's see. Oh! Oh, I'm sorry. You gave me that for Christmas. Yes. Louise all got hurt. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm sure she has. Oh, I must have a cold drink. Can you bring it from my pen? Good. Would you like a cold drink, Derek? A cup of tea? Uh, no, no, no thanks. No, I, I, what I would like uh, is a word with both of you. Oh? Well, will it take long? And I'm having a blitz on the tennis court. No, no, uh, no, not long. It's about Envy Standish. Now, what you've done, taking him in, as you have, is, is typical of your generosity. I, I still haven't forgotten uh, how kind you were over mother's lapses, but, and it is a but, how well do you really know the man? Envy, we were at Oxford together. Yes, but by your own admission, that wasn't actually uh, knowing him, yeah, that was knowing of. Well, yes. I mean, I, 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 re I read the newspapers, and men do seem to be uh, more capable of worse things now than they used to be, and this man is actually in your house. He's Henry Standish. Look, Mary, I'll be blunt. For all you know about him, he could be the man in the moon. I mean, you've no idea what he's been up to for the last 20 years. Derek, you had dinner with him. He told us. He told us nothing. Sorry. The whole, the, the whole thing, it was a, uh, a miasma. Uh, sketchy. No, not, not, not sketchy. Ah, uh, fuzzy. That's the word. Fuzzy. Even his reasons for leaving the diplomatic service. You're fuzzy. An incident on a balcony in Caracas. What does that mean? Fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. Sorry. Look, look, Derek. I know, uh, we both know that you only have our interests at heart. Of course. But gold doesn't rust. And quality in N.B. Standish is innate. He'll always have it. It will always be there. Very well. I've said my piece. I'll get back to my logs now. Mary, has Derek ever kissed you? Just me Christmas. He kissed you too. Yeah. It must be difficult for him to see what we mean about envy. What he was. What he could be again. Hmm. Yes, I've been thinking about that. Look. Admiring the view. It is lovely, isn't it? 
We must do this every day. I've telephoned your publisher. You've done what? I've telephoned your publisher. I'm afraid they can't commission anything at the moment. It's... It's been a long time. But they did say that they would be very, very interested in seeing anything that you chose to write. The, that is, of course, if you did choose to write anything. Mm -hmm. Envy, envy. Here he is. There's no hiding place for you. They hunt me down wherever I am. It's not bloody tennis, it's bloody walks. And if it's not bloody walks, it's bloody books that I might care to write. Oh, no wonder I ain't seen you. You obviously should not get to get out of an evening. I can't get out of an evening. They've taken over my evening. It's not revivals of Dylan Thomas by some talentless repertory company. It's evenings of bridge with players who should never have aspired to anything beyond pontoon. It's endless dinner parties with me being produced as their big gun and then having to try and sound like them. I'm being devoured from the inside outwards. Uh-huh. I told you there'd be a price to pay. How do you like this beer all over you? <laughs> well, how'd you get out tonight, then? I'm throwing a wobbly. Oh. At this moment, I'm supposed to be at a national trust meeting. But I felt faint and had to step outside. Well, why didn't they step outside with you and hold your hand? Because I move like a favourite at Sandown Park. Uh-oh. They found you, though. What? <laughs> Are you trying to induce a heart attack? Well, actually, I thought how well you was looking I feel well, as a matter of fact. <laughs> All that good food. Bloody walks. Yeah. No, we've got the opportunity. I see you're a lovely dresser. Yes, I am indeed. An elegant man, William. But let me tell you, this exterior masks a hunted animal. Mm, well, you're supposed to have this here massive brain. Think of something. Book! Yes? I think I'm ready. For the first time in years, I have that energy inside me. I want to write again. And it's all due to your infinite kindness. Oh, it makes it so worthwhile. What's it to be about, Envy? Well, I've chosen a fairly broad canvas. If I were to say the warp and weft of society, Mary, you know what I mean. Oh, yes. I must admit, I'm a little frightened, but the, the force exists and it has to be expressed. Or would you mind very much if I dedicated the book to both of you? <laughs> There's only one sadness. Well, you're not leaving. Oh, no. But I'm afraid this is the last outing which we'll be able to enjoy together for some time. Why? Well, because writing a book is merely a matter of sitting down at a typewriter. That's what Mary does. Yes, and look at the results. <laughs> you see, I'll need privacy. Privacy to think, to write. And there'll be a lot of research. I'll be out a lot. Sounds positively antisocial. You'll probably only see me at meals. I know it's asking a great deal, but... Of course it isn't. You must do whatever you feel is necessary. What does he mean, the Force exists again? Who does he think he is, Darth Vader? <laughs> if you were to read his book, you would see. You're not that again. According to you, if I were to read his book, I'd suddenly understand the meaning of life or something. Louise is back. It runs well. Did 
they knocked the 40 pounds off? Yes, and threw in a full tank of petrol. Oh. Do you think he'll like it? Oh, I'm sure he will. He? It's for NV. That's bloody marvellous. Weeks and weeks I've been going on about wanting a scooter. All he has to do is write once upon a time and you give him a bloody car. That's for the bloodies, please, Ellen. Well, Envy needs a car. You know how much research he's been doing. Perhaps that's what he wrote in his first book, Chapter One, How to Get a Car. Shh. Listen. He's working. Oh, well. As he's actually working, I should buy him a micro light aeroplane. NV, NV! He's working. I want to see his face. NV! Woo! NV, NV! Yes? Oh, do come down. We've got a surprise for you. Now, what have you two been up to? Peter? <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Thank you very much. Well, I must say this is very nice, Derek. I haven't seen you for years. How's your mother? I lost her. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Still, uh, she isn't suffering anymore. You must feel terribly lonely. Yes, but uh, one has one's friends. <laughs> of course. How about you, Peter? Uh, still in the diplomatic service? <laughs> All my sins. Mm. Tell me, did you ever run into a chap called N.V. Standish? No, I don't think so. Why? Well, he's, uh, he's uh, cropped up locally, and uh, he, was, uh, he was with your lot, apparently, resigned in the early 60s. Oh? Yes. A bit odd, because he was doing very well, you see. Venezuela. Well, uh, I suppose I could ask a few questions. Could you? Oh, we need to meet again. Oh, well, yes, of course, yes. Well, yes, that, that goes without saying. Yes. Well, I'd like to anyway. Huh. We'd be through this lot and away on the motorbike. Yeah, but it wouldn't be so comfortable. Can't go on forever, you know. Huh. Maybe not. Well, there's three or four years in it, at least. I'd play my cards, right? <laughs> Where are you today? Researching again? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> God. This here book of yours really is a work of fiction, isn't it? Derek was so sweet today. He must have seen me mooning about the tennis Possibly. court, so he came over and asked me if I wanted a game. I didn't know Derek played tennis. Oh, yes. Well. <laughs> but how typically thoughtful of him to turn out and... <laughs> oh, God, you should have seen his shorts. <laughs> <laughs> what are his legs like? <laughs> the same size all the way up. <laughs> Incidentally, how's the book coming along, Envy? Hmm? Well, that's the first time you've shown any interest, Ellen. Mm -hmm. Why do you ask? Because we were coming back from a field trip today and I saw you coming out of the race course. Ah. Oh. Caught red-handed. What is it, lines or detention? No, the truth of the matter is I've been working rather hard lately. And the idea of doing something silly seemed rather attractive. Um, um, I mean, I never even go to the races. Besides, a break like that uh, can sometimes serve its purpose. Uh, let the ideas ferment strands here, strands there. I've got a ton of notes upstairs. Have you actually started to write anything yet, Envy? Two chapters. Uh, draft form only, of course. How exciting. I'd say miraculous. He hasn't written a word. What are you talking about? I looked. Ellie. All I found was this. How could you?
Mary Louise. Go away. Please come out. Come downstairs and let me explain. It's a spiteful thing to do, Ellen. I didn't do it out of spite. I did it because you have been making fools out of my mother and Aunt Mary. Look, I couldn't care less if you'd write another bloody book or not, but you let them think you were. It's much more complicated than that, Ellen. Well? I lied. Well, we know that. I lied for a reason. We trusted you, Envy. And you did it on us from a great height. I lied because I was afraid. Afraid? Why should you be afraid of us? Not of you. It's a fear within myself. It's something that I've carried around with me for a long time now. It's the fear that I'm not creative anymore. I'll tell you something of my life. Perhaps every damn rotten stinking thing that's ever happened to me has finally taken its toll. Perhaps the spark was put out some time ago. But you both believed in me. And I wanted so much to give something back. I did try. But it was like turning on the tap when there's no water tank in the loft. So I did the unforgivable thing. I lied. Yes, it was unforgivable. <laughs> easy, too. No, not easy. Well, obviously easier than telling the truth. Go on, Mum. We didn't force you to write a book. Or not write a book, as the case may be. We encouraged you. Yes. But if you were afraid, why didn't you tell us? I said I wanted to repay you. Well, you could have got out of that hammock occasionally and mowed the lawn. Look, we never wanted repayment. I mean, what sort of people do you think we are? Do you think so little of us that if you told us you couldn't write, we'd have said, push off, get back to your hamburgers? I think the world of both of you. Well, it certainly doesn't seem like it. Perhaps I'd better pack. Perhaps you had. Ah, it's ironic that my part in the incident, which cost me my career, was the best thing I ever did in my life. <laughs> Doubly ironic that events since then have resulted in me doing the worst thing in my life. Lying to you. What did happen on that balcony in Caracas? No, there's no point in my telling you now. We want to know. Very well. But I want your solemn promise that you will never reveal to another living soul what I'm about to tell you. Because there are more important people than myself involved. Yes, of course. We promise. Helen? Yes. There was a reception at the British Embassy in Caracas to celebrate the signing of a new trade agreement between Great Britain and Venezuela. Oh, it was a glittering affair, held in the huge Baroque ballroom. Orchestra, champagne, caviar. It was the last official function of the British ambassador, the pinnacle of a distinguished career in the service. I had immense respect for that man. I remember we were chatting as she came in. She was one of the most beautiful women I had ever seen. 
I say, woman. She was hardly a year older than you, Ellen. The daughter of the Venezuelan foreign minister. She was introduced, and I could see that our ambassador was captivated by her. <laughs> Who wouldn't have been? But as the evening wore on, I grew increasingly uneasy. I could see that it was more than captivation. It was as though he was under a spell. And she, for her part, was drinking far more champagne than she probably should have done. I could sense the danger, but I was hamstrung. I mean, I had my own duties. Suddenly, I looked across to see them both slipping out through the curtains out onto the balcony. May I? Of course. I was awakened next morning by a terrible hiatus downstairs in the entrance hall. Thank goodness I was the first to get to him. It was the girl's father. She'd broken down and said that she could no longer go to her forthcoming wedding as a virgin. Some sense of sharing the blame made her refuse to name the man involved. All she would say was that he was a member of the British staff. Naturally, the girl's father was outraged. He wanted to head to roll somewhere. If not, well, I hardly need point out the international implications. The way I'd presented itself to me there and then. I said that I had seduced the girl. What else could I have done? The ambassador, my friend, had had a long, unblemished career in the service of his country. Four children to a boarding school in England. He was about to retire. Why allow all that to be destroyed by one fall from grace? And the ambassador let you do it? He let you take the blame? Oh, uh, we, we argued for hours. Uh, we both knew it would kill his wife. I was the younger man, so much less to lose. I could always start another career for myself. <laughs> so I thought. Anyway, I resigned and the matter was hushed up. My friend's dead now. I, vi I visited his grave once. And we sat in judgment on you. We should have known there'd be a reason. If only you had told us. I've never told anyone before. And now that I have, I suddenly feel very empty and very tired. Do you mind if I... Oh, no. No, no, of course not. And there'll be more from Double First at 8.30 next Tuesday evening. <laughs>